I try and comfort a terrified Rottweiler, meet a great Pyrenees with a wild past, and spend time with a boxer whose family knows he's here but haven't shown up yet. Let's sit with some dogs. Oh, Ranma the Malamute got adopted. <laughs> I know that's weird that I seem sad, but it's because he got returned. I always worry about these dogs when they get returned, just what they go through mentally. Now the team actually renamed him Sonic, which I love. Let's go check on him and see how he's doing. Oh, bud, I'm so sorry. You want me to come in and say hello? Okay, I'm coming in, bud, I'm coming in. I brought you something for being such a good boy. Here you go, bud. It's not your fault and I'm sorry. Hey, but listen. This is a happy moment because I get to see you again, and that makes me happy. And you got a giant treat, and that makes you happy. Like you, I went through a range of emotions from anger and sadness and frustration that he was returned. But for his sake, I need to put all of that aside because what matters most right now is this moment. It was just a practice run. We're gonna make sure that the next one sticks. I know people say you're a little extra work, and it's just because there's just a bit more of a reward at the end of the tunnel, huh? Anyone who gets a snuggle muffin like this has to put in some work and effort, huh? You're a good boy, and it's gonna be okay. Just a, a quick weekend jaunt to hang out with some friends, and now you're back here until you get your forever family. I don't know why I chose to wear a black shirt today, because <laughs> I'm gonna leave looking just like you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you're such a goofball. <laughs> the thing is, I've hung out with Huskies, but I've never hung out with a Malibu, and I guess I didn't understand how goofy they are. Or is it just Sonic? I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I let the members know right away that he was returned. And one of the questions I got is, does the shelter do a good job of screening? I've been to a lot of shelters and rescues, and screenings typically range from nearly not enough all the way to close to impossible. Like, do you have a 10-foot fence and an electric gate outside of that and no pool and just all kinds of crazy things that would exclude you from adopting a dog? Some of you may have even been through this. I've even been rejected in adopting a dog. Me! <laughs> oh, who would think as such? What? What is this, bud? Showing off your beautiful hindquarters here? What's going on? But I'll tell you this, that's, that looks too weird. <laughs> Come here. This shelter is one of the better I've seen in balancing finding the right person and the right dog. But what I really love about this shelter is they make a guarantee to take care of the animal first. So if it doesn't work out, they want the pet back no matter what. Because they want to make sure, first and foremost, that the pet is okay. I will say this, though. If you ever adopt a pet, you have to give it more than 24, 48 hours. A I really like the 333 rule that goes like this. The first three days are decompression. The dog's likely not gonna feel comfortable, might be overwhelmed, may not eat. They might test boundaries just because they don't understand them. Three weeks, they're learning the routine. They might start to feel more comfortable, develop love and respect towards the owner. They've learned some boundaries, might even start to be a little protective over their home. And three months for a dog to really settle in. That trust and that bond is being built. They feel like they're safe and they're not gonna get returned to the shelter and they're comfortable with the routine. Now might even be a good time to start socializing with strangers. But I've seen with most dogs, it usually takes at least this long. And the thing is, any dog that I have rehabilitated, either physically or mentally, has taken way more than 48 hours. It takes days, weeks, months. I mean, think about you. Whenever you move to a new place or you go to a new place, are you comfortable within 48 hours? Are you yourself? Typically, no. It takes some time to get acquainted, to get used to the space, to get used to the new people. I don't know yet, but we're gonna come up with a plan to get you the perfect forever family. I don't have any treats left back there, buddy. <laughs> what I do know about Malamutes, and I'm experiencing it firsthand, is they need a good amount of work. <laughs> but a big reward, huh? <laughs> but he's a good boy. Look at this, can you see this? <laughs> Kinda. I'm still, I'm still working on a plan, buddy. Well, I'm not gonna leave today, though, without us coming up with something. What is this? Wait, what is this? Did you, hey, did you see this on Sonic? He has a hole. You know oh, what that's for? Oh, yeah, there's a volunteer that's actually interested in adopting him. Really? Yeah. Okay, let's go find Cheryl. She's the volunteer coordinator. We're gonna get some more details on this. This could be really good. Sometimes I have to pass a dog by because they tell me that they're not ready yet through their body language and growling. Rottweilers are some of the sweetest dogs I know, but they can also be very protective of their space. And I wanted to respect that boundary, but I took a moment and there was something about her that was inviting. 
I thought it was worth a try to approach. Her eyes shifted from scared to curious. And sure enough, when I went in to sit down with her, she was cautious, but interested. Like treats. Rottweilers are some of the most kind, loving, gentle, protective dogs ever. I really love them. They're such great family dogs. And to see a dog like this just shut down in the shelter, a Rottweiler with so much confidence makes me sad a little bit for sure. Alexis, do you know her story? Found by Good Samaritan by the airport. Name is apparently Emma. Hi, Emma. Oh, hi. Oh, he's a good girl. Now, Emma is on the dog walking program and she does really fantastic on that, which is really great. If you want to come volunteer at Animal Friends of the Valleys or your shelter rescue, wherever you're at, dog walking is one of the best ways to start getting involved. And you get to meet amazing dogs like this. And let me tell you, you can do what I do in so many different ways. Because if you get a dog like this that's shut down and you take them on a walk and you get to see them come to life, it's really neat because you get to see the best side of their personality. And when you do that, you can take pictures or video, you can share that on your social media. And so many times I've seen that happen and those dogs get adopted. In fact, at Animal Friends of the Valleys, someone does that on Facebook. Look at this face. Yeah, it's so pretty. What a transformation in just such a short amount of time, huh? Here you go. That's a good girl. If you've ever had a Rottweiler, you are immediately a Rottweiler lover. You can't have this breed of dog without falling in love. But they can be a lot of work, no doubt. They need guidance, and they need training, they need love, they need exercise. Now, I don't know how she got loose, but she was running around by the airport. The airport. The thing is, she's gonna need out of here fast. But if you're looking for a good dog, wow, she's it. Her darker complexion and the fact that she's a Rottweiler might cause her to get passed by. So I'm hoping highlighting her here and telling her story might just catch your eye. Now this next dog I was curious about was a Great Pyrenees. I was walking by her kennel and she stopped me in her track. What Great Pyrenees doesn't? Let's go in and sit down with her. Oh, you are so skinny. I didn't even realize. What have you been through? You just need some love. I feel like you've given up here. Sometimes it's hard to explain, like, just the feeling you get when you're in the space with a certain kind of dog. But sometimes it's just like sorrow and sadness. And I try not to let that transfer, but I also want to be aware of it. Like, I don't want to dismiss that she's sad. Like, it's gonna be okay. Wait, as soon as I stop petting her, she starts whining at me to pet her. You want more pets? Here, watch. I'll stop petting her. Here, watch. <laughs> you want more love? You want more love? Okay. Her paw is the size of my hand. Look at that. I'm six foot four. Like, I have big hands. I'm sitting with this sad, great Pyrenees. Do you know what her story is? Unfortunately, and she was actually recently featured on On the Couch with Bill. Oh, well, that's so good. They are really wanting her out of here. She's definitely a staff favorite. Oh, no. No wonder you're so sad. Here's what a welfare check means if Animal Control brings a dog in. Animal Control goes to the house, likely because there was a complaint or some concerned neighbors or Good Samaritan said, hey, I don't think this dog's in a good situation. Animal Control goes to that house. They try everything they can to work with that dog's family, the owner, unless it's really bad. And uh, one of two things will happen. If it's really bad, immediately they'll pull the dog or they'll try and work with the dog's owner, their family. But if they can't come up with a resolution or the family just doesn't care about the dog, then Animal Control will bring the dog into the shelter. And sweetheart, I am sorry, but that's what happened to you. The notes think that they were just using her to breed her and sell great parodies. 
which unfortunately I see a lot. And then these great parodies, they end up in the shelter because they're a majestic breed, but they're very specific. They need a lot of work. They need a lot of space to roam. They need daily walks. Breaks my heart. It's no wonder she's so sad. Hey, but baby, I got something for you. I got something for you. Something you probably haven't had enough of in your life. Look at this. I got a treat. You want a treat? There we go. Treats are often about how much I trust you. There has to be an element of trust to take a treat. And of course the treat has to taste good. For some dogs, some dogs will eat whatever you give them. <laughs> but you did here, you can have the rest of that. You deserve it. Look at that goofy derp face. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and if you look close too, you can see she's had lots of puppies. Backyard breeders that just use dogs like this to make money to sell puppies will neglect these dogs. Like all of the signs are there, right? She's super skinny. She's really sad. She doesn't really know how to take treats, if that's a good thing. She's probably never been given treats. She just wants affection really bad. Look at that. She, oh my gosh. Certainly no one's taking the time to pet her off her head because they're just using her to make money. You're amazing. I'm sorry no one's ever told you that. Look at what a little bit of love will do. Look at that wagon tail. Hi, you're a good girl. And look, Chiquita can go home with you today. And what I love about this is her adoption fee is only like $50. And look, she's already been spayed. And she, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a hold on her. That sticker means that there's a temporary hold on her. We'll come back. We'll find out what's going on with that. We'll come back. Okay, but don't forget, we're still on the hunt for this supposed volunteer that might be adopting Sonic. I got to find Cheryl. Oh, <laughs> distracted by this cute little dog. Hey, there's Cheryl. Let's find out. So it is a volunteer? Yes, it's a volunteer. A dog walker. She just became a dog walker oh. back in March, so she's going to know what she's doing with this dog. That could be perfect. Okay, thank you. Cheryl's great. But the whole volunteer program is great. And I'm going to the front right now because we just got paged. So it might even be Sonic's potential adopter. Look, I just want to point something out. She's a volunteer and you can do this too. Spend time working with dogs, be a volunteer for a while, and then you can sit with dogs. I'm not the only one doing it. Uh -huh. Are you doing the adoption for Sonic? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh, yeah. That's awesome right now. But what, right now? Right now? Well, there's a little so, snafu, but I'm hoping I can take it. I kind of backed off a little bit when I heard about that snafu. I want to give them a chance to work it out. Hopefully it's no big deal and we can work through this, but I don't know. Guys, this this happens in real time, right? Like <laughs> sometimes there's some speed bumps, but oh, fingers crossed because Sonic needs a good home. I guaranteed him the right family and who could be better than an actual volunteer that works here that walks dogs and knows dogs and knows how much work Sonic would be, but how rewarding Sonic would be. Can I just say, I've never seen so many littles in the shelter. Uh, littles is a short form for little dogs. At least that term's often used in the shelter rescue world. But the fact is, little dogs typically get adopted faster than big dogs. I'm just not seeing that right now because shelters are just so overwhelmed. So I wanted to at least spend some time with the little dog and there was one that just got me, his little underbite, his big old lip. I wanted to sit down with him, show him a little comfort and see if I could learn more about his story. Hi. Peter, you want a little treat, bud? You deserve a treat. Listen, I heard a little bit about your story and what you've been through, and I'm sorry. You lost your mom. When I say mom, by the way, I mean like his human mom, she passed. And what I heard on the story, his mom passed, so then daughter, niece, somebody, I don't know, had him, didn't even know his name, called him Little White Dog. What do the actual notes say, Alexis? He was actually found running out uh, on the street by animal control. When he was brought in, they contacted the owner and they notified them the owner passed away. And he was staying with somebody else, a daughter, a family friend. They didn't know his name. And there's just been some wishy-washy information regarding him and now he's available. He's been here for nearly two weeks now. It's not always gonna be like this, buddy. You know, dogs don't always come into the shelter abused. But he's been through it. You can tell he's got marks on him. Cheryl swung by too because she actually knew a little bit about him and she has fallen in love with him. It might even be considering adopting him. It looked like when he came in, he was a uh, whole chewed up by something. What do you think he was chewed up by? I don't know. He had some whole chewed up by some 
lots of uh, heels and wounds and good scabs on them. A lot of times when a dog comes in and got a lot of bite marks or like scratches, people immediately go to, oh, this dog was used for dog fighting. Sometimes that happens, but a lot of times it comes from other wildlife. You know, a dog like this, this size, out running around, coyotes would definitely see him as an easy target for an easy meal and they would gang up on him. And so he likely was out there defending himself, doing everything he could just to stay alive. But he's such a cool guy and he was probably really loved by his mom and mom passed away. She didn't have a plan for him of what would happen, which I don't think most people do. And so now he's been bouncing around by people who just don't care about him. Do we know where the name Peter came from? Was that his original name or did someone here name him that? Or actually Cheryl. Cheryl named him Peter? Nicknamed him Peter. I like Peter. I think that's a fitting name, buddy. You look like a Peter. Okay, here's what I do know, bud. Life's gonna be a lot better moving forward. I know right now it might be a little scary and you might be a little unsure about what's going on, but I promise you're safe. Okay. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Still really skittish. Like he's got that perfect butt face. That big old bottom lip. <laughs> oh, you got a snaggle tooth. I just, I didn't see that until right now. Look at that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cute. He's very handsome. He's so handsome. He's like the model mutt, you know? You were almost going to take him home, huh? <laughs> He's like my Piper. Yeah, very similar, huh? Piper's smaller though, right? A little bit? A little bit chunky. Chunky. Come here, let's do the scoop. I think you can use a little love. There we go. I heard a rumor that uh, Kim, who works at the shelter, might be interested in Peter. Oh. Wait, are you thinking about Peter? Might be it's a fight. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah, yeah, we're just letting it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we should set up like an arm wrestling competition for you guys. We're not ready yet. We yeah. just lost our other dog oh, like, a little over a month ago. My boyfriend's not ready. I'm kind of ready, but. Takes a so while. I've yeah, yeah, I just came in and I told him, I said, do you want to come in? And I'm like, he's got such a good personality. He's yeah, wagging his so tail I know, I know, I was going to go see him just yeah. now. Yeah, I'm on my lunch. I just but, sat yeah. with him and he was really awesome. Aww. He's so sweet and that big old bottom lip is so yeah, cute. Yeah, he is so cute. I yeah. know. Okay, well, I totally yeah. understand, but if you do end up adopting him, okay. let me know because okay, he's will. pretty awesome. Yeah. Try and talk him into it. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe you just say, you know, Honey, I just want you to come up and have lunch with yeah. me. Not even to see the dog. And you go, oh, actually my oh, break room, here. we have to go through here to get to the break room. <laughs> well, Peter, no guarantees, but it looks like things are looking up for you, buddy. I work really hard to show the positive side of dog rescue. And I'm gonna continue to do that with my boy Champ here. But going in to sit down with him, my head was heavy because it hasn't been that long since I lost my boxer flip. And I thought the minute I sat down with him, I was gonna start bawling like a baby. Yeah, so the thing is, I'm trying to support you here. But Champ had other ideas. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> he was not gonna let me sit down with him. His little goofy, fun spirit is the exact reason why boxers are one of my favorite breeds ever. Sit, 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 calm. They're goofy, loyal, strong, courageous, and that face. Maybe, Alexis, we try to get him out of the yard. Remember, sitting with dogs is really trying to facilitate what might be good for the dog. And for Champ, it was not gonna be me sitting down. So getting him out in the yard to get some of that boxer energy out was, I think, the right thing. He's got that happy boxer face on too, which makes me really happy. But let me tell you, it was like a punch in the gut when I found out that Champ's family knew he was here. It had been days. And they still haven't come to get him. Now, no judgment, but if my dog got away and he was at the shelter, I would be there the moment they opened their doors to scoop him back up and take him home. All right, not, not too much of a toy guy. Oh, that's pretty cute. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> sit. Champ, sit. What? 
and I think he would have kept playing outside even longer, but it's hot. He's a short snout dog, so we have to be very careful because that outdoor area can get really warm. Chiquita's hold didn't come. They're not coming, I found out. I guess it was a hold that yesterday the person called and said it's not the right dog for them, so they never came. Chiquita is not going home today, but I had an idea. What if we went live, and we did, and I am blown away by how many of you got on there and hit that heart button and liked and commented because she can feel that, like she knows that love definitely transfers. Okay, so she's spayed, she'll have adoption fee covered, then we just gotta share this and we can get the word out, we can get her adopted, or if you live locally, come up, um, say hi, and adopt her. And a big thank you to all of the members, people who have joined the channel. I know it's a small monthly fee, but it makes a big difference. And the fact that you get notified and all of you jump on there because we're a community, just know it means the world to me too. Okay, but the thing is with Sonic, like what's the snafu? Is Sonic gonna get adopted or hey, you would know. Did we find out what the snafu was? So it's just because her pet at home is not spayed. What? Oh, I have a little Shih Tzu at home, and she's not um, fixed yet, and neither is he, and we don't want puppies, so we had to make sure that we can get him an appointment to be neutered. Oh, and because I saw this on the wall, I had to immediately ask her why she wants to adopt Sonic. I follow the Animal Friends of the Valley website, and so I saw him posted there, but I'm also a volunteer dog walker, and so although he was adopted and returned, I got to see him yesterday when I came to do my volunteering, and super excited that he came back so I can take him home. We had a Malamute before, and the Malamutes are a perfect dog, and so he passed away in 2019, and we're ready for a new baby, and here he is. Sonic, you're going home, buddy. You're going home. Uh, attention, Animal Friends of the Values. Congratulations to Cynthia for adopting Sonic, our Alaskan puppy. You're going to their forever home. Woo! Here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> you're going home, buddy. Here you go, Mom. Thank you. Hi, baby. Be a troublemaker. We got a Furbo dog camera for you. Oh my god! How good is that? Dog. Yeah, so Furbo for good. So they're helping pets everywhere. They are sponsoring this, and uh -huh. they wanted to give this to you. <gasps> Amazing! Yeah. Thank you All so right, buddy. much. I don't know about you, but my heart hurts when I find out a dog got returned, but it's often for the better. This is a perfect example of how Sonic is now in the perfect family and situation. Sometimes these things are just meant to be, and I am so happy. Sonic, congratulations on your new family. And Furbo, thank you for sponsoring this video. Guys, Furbo for Good has saved almost 40,000 pets. It's over 37,000 right now. And I want to get to 40,000 with them by the end of the year. And we can do that, and you can be a part of that too because Furbo for Good helps with sheltering, feeding, adoption fees for pets, and so much more. And how it works is when you buy a Furbo dog camera or a Furbo cat camera, a portion of that goes to the Furbo for Good fund. How great is that? You get an awesome camera that can help you with your dog if they have anxiety. You can track them when you're not home. You can use it directly from your mobile phone. And I've been using this for years. It helps so much with Kobe and all of his anxiety and because he's a blind dog and he runs into things. It was such a big help with my dog Flip. Rest in peace, my buddy. And my little squirt, Zoe. Like just having that peace of mind when we're out and about to be able to check on our dogs, awesome. And to know that Furbo is teamed up with us to help so many dogs in need and to help us raise funds so that we can build the outside canopy in the dog runs and make it a really comfortable environment for them is amazing. Get this, Furbo for Good is matching donations. We've already raised over $15,000 because we've gotta to get to about $20,000 to cover the bid for that outside area. Just more proof of how awesome Furbo for Good is and the entire Furbo team and how much they love animals. Okay, check it out. I'm gonna put the link right here or go to the description below. Go now and get one for your dog or cat. And look, can we just take a moment to appreciate how awesome Animal Friends of the Valleys is, all of their staff, all of the volunteers. I'm sure your shelter or rescue is also awesome, but I gotta tell you, Animal Friends of the Valleys, they're pretty awesome.